back guys well i'm not blind get you back to the action shortly and i'll tell you about this one a little bit later on but first i've got something to do So welcome back guys. Apologies, we haven't uploaded for like two months. Wind's been horrible, any of you fishers know, very limited opportunity to get offshore. I'll kick it off with the Australia Day weekend, going back a ways now, but we had an awesome day at Seven Hills Estate, brother's property down in Conondale. Australia Day weekend, heap of mates, vans, swimming, drinking, you know what it's about. If you're from the States, maybe it's like the 4th of July, I don't know. Leave us a comment below. Check out our Australia Day weekend at Seven Hills Estate. Have a go at these guys on Australia Day. Oh, oh, no. Hey, mate. 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 Hey, Tell me off These are my shoes. Straight, eh? What are you doing, babe? Is that your brother? There's a scarecrow going on over here. I think he's holding his, I think he's holding his doodle too. Where's this chook pen they talk of? We're going up to check out this chook pen. Oh no, I've lost my soul. Hmm. Oh, I've my doodle. <laughs> That must be him. What is that? You're supposed to be in bed. Have you not been fed? Do they have to feed him? No, it's all watermelon. Oh, nice. Don't give away too many secrets. Up in the hills here. Watermelon. Uh, that looks like a red banana, yeah? That's cool. Check out the clouds up there. Seven Hills Estate, life's better on the farm, guys. Go check it out. Happy Australia Day, by the way. Hey, babe. Yeah. Shame we're not fishing. I know. It's not good. First time in about three years on Australia Day we haven't been fishing. Rock nine. More rock nine. There's big, look at the size of that bloody watermelon. It's ready to pick. 
Let me get that off. Ooh. There. Stay away from that guy, please. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Not too. Why is that not right? What's with that little patch there? And that silly little hill. Smell. Rosemary. Good sniff, eh? Basil. Mm. That's good. What is it? Isn't that song One Headlight? Was it, um. Oh, you know it. One Headlight. If you open your phone up, I can Google it for you. Still got the original tyres on it. Wouldn't you love to know the people that sat in that and drove in it? Oh, cool. And the stories. Pretty man. Uh, it's going to be a bit of pulp uh, non fiction this one. We moved on to Wellesley's. Wellesley's is a tackle supplier on the Sunshine Coast. Awesome joint. Been there for years. Had to stock up on a few items. Yeah, check that out. So, what are we getting, babe? Some new leader. Cooks here. They, they sell doll cooks here. Which is cheap, a lot cheaper than bloody um, BCF. So, if you're on the Sunshine Coast, guys, come see the guys at Wellesley's. Awesome. There's your. Yeah, my bracket, I, I custom made a bracket for it, unfortunately. That, that will... Use that before, have I? Yeah, I think that's the one. Pan Pandera. Yeah. Yeah. Give that a crap too. Okay. So, 80? Yes, please. That doesn't come in a little spool, does it? That's the one you want. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for that. Are. That's pretty good, really, isn't it? What'd you get? Wellsies. What did that cost you? Main reason um, I'm doing this video is to let you know we're still here, haven't been out, and the reason why is mainly my eyes, unfortunately. Stick around too. We did our first ever chili crab. Uh, Snazza's neighbour down there, mad crabber, Steve, thanks mate. He gave some two fresh muddies, and uh, we did our first ever chili crab, or Snaz did. So stick around for that. Uh, that is honestly the best chili crab I've ever had. So I'll try to put the recipe there. If it's not there, check out the comments maybe. But you've got to give it a crack. You get a crab, leave it green and try this recipe. It is literally the best crab I've ever eaten. Bit messy, but check that out. Len Solis commented on one of our videos. And thank you, Len. Since i uh, become friends on Facebook as well, he recommended, I was chasing uh, knife sharpeners. I'm sick of putting a dull, e having a dull edge on my blades. Uh, got a heap of knives laying around. Yeah, that's probably half of them or a third of them. Sick of buying new knives every time 
they lose their edge and you just can't get that edge back on. So great guy, he recommended I buy the Ken Onion knife sharpener. And that's it there. So I'm gonna unbox that and uh, give that a crack. But I wanted to show you what it's like firsthand so you can, I don't know, make that choice as well. So not a cheap appliance, it's pretty heavy in the box. Uh, yeah, three kilos or something. So 380 bucks, so a fair investment as well. Like Len has uh, recommended to me, and based on his recommendation, I'm sure this is going to be a good bit of gear. It, you know, he just sounded honestly like he knew what he's talking about, but I want to show you guys firsthand what it's like straight out of the box. I've had this sitting on my bench for like two months, and I haven't unwrapped it because I wanted to do this video to show you guys, so I hope it's cool. Let's that wrap it up good. So that's it there. Ken Onion knife sharpener. Don't know who Ken Onion is. It's made where? So unlike our stuff here in Australia, where it says made in wherever, you usually know where to. This doesn't actually have made in anywhere on it. However, it does have USA address on the back from Workshop. So where that's actually manufactured, I may say it on the tool itself. Not one for instructions, so it's a quick start guide. Be straight into that. So warranty and a more thorough instruction booklet. Ooh. All right, so it's a, it's a sanding type sharpener and they appear to be all different grades. That'll be interesting too. But there's the unit there. Once again, there's no made in any particular country actually on the device itself, it's work sharp, it's got a US address to it. So I'm gonna rip this out, get it plugged in. Before I forget, something else I wanna show you guys. And I don't know whether you can see, but back out there, there's bamboo everywhere. And you know what bamboo's like? So while I was down in Brizzy, got myself one of these. But I'm gonna use these next trip and we're gonna cut the frame, uh, cut the wings and the head off a big red, fingers crossed, or trout, whatever. It's gonna make that very quick and easy. Straight up on this quick start guide, I've got your different knives and what you're using them for. Apparently, you've gotta alter your angle accordingly to the purpose of your knife. One is pretty funny, it's a hunting knife, but whether you want your knife with bragging rights or not, so it's 22 and a half degrees on this little jobby here. How sharp can you get? And the scale says ridiculous. <laughs> Make me pretty keen to try this straight up. But I'm over here on the hunting. I'm over here on the, um, the filleting. It tells you how much, it, based on what your, your knife condition is, it's telling you what belt to use and then how many strokes at a certain angle you've got to do to achieve uh, the result. So there's also the speed at which you do the pullback stroke and it's saying on a four inch blade it's four seconds so it's an inch per second. So I've got a absolutely destroyed F-thick knife. F-thick, don't know whether you know them, a heap of them. When they're sharp they're good. It's a bit flexible. I like them for filling. Good boning knife as well if you're in a bit of hunting. I so said that's dull as. No edge on it at all. Give that a shot. So I'm going to do five aside. Can onion knife sharpener. It's definitely putting a good edge on that knife. So what I don't like about it, now I'm only literally first five minutes of this. They have this little edge guide, You're pulling your sharp edge on something hard that's potentially dulling it again, but maybe I should read the instructions. <laughs> so after reading the instructions, that edge guide, you can actually turn and move it out of the way. So we've got rid of that. So I reckon that's a bit counterintuitive, blunting your blade by pulling your knife along something hard so let's 
give that another crack. And I'll turn it down to 17.5 degrees, a bit steeper edge on it, should be, I believe it'll be sharper. So let's give that a crack. See that edge? like sitting there on a stone doing 10 knives it's just out of control so this is going to be a hell of a lot quicker and uh, if it's quicker you're going to do it more often also going to try it on one of the kitchen knives is one of my favorites for cooking let me give that a crack nothing special but let's give that a go I don't know whether you can see that so it's it's putting it an additional edge on it like so I think the key to this will be start off because these that don't have good edges this particular one doesn't have a good edge on it just like a stone start off coarse and come down got three different types I'll give that a, I'll give that a crack now See if it makes any difference and, and pull that edge back. If I'm using a stone and all, you know, you pull through knife sharpness when you get on the boat, which we have, I always finish off with a steel. Don't know how this will react to a steel though, being orbital belt, you know. But it's definitely got an edge on it. Um, if you've used one, leave us a comment below. But stick around for this crab cooker. It is the best, honestly, the best chili mud crab I've ever had. Um, we've never cooked it ourselves, but eating it plenty in restaurants and stuff like that, mates, places, whatever. This one was the best I've ever had. So stick around. Stez, she's a legend. She did that. And uh, she's cooking it up. So check it out. A uh, shout out to Len too for leaving us that comment. What I've uh, discovered in the three years we've been doing YouTube, it's just a great community and uh, our community is awesome. So jump in, have a read of some of the comments on our previous videos. All great people from all parts of the world. All right, thanks for the apologies. We haven't uploaded for like two months. The main reason though is I've had to have double eye surgery. So I didn't have to have, just elective I suppose. Once you hit 40, eyesight goes down. Uh, sick of wearing glasses for anything up close, hooks, you name it. You just can't, you're, you always got glasses on. I had uh, artificial lenses put in both eyes and glasses are gone. So I'll put a bit of that in this video. Anyone considering it may be able to watch my journey and Take that into consideration for yourself. Well, surgery, that was scary, but only because of eyes. I've had plenty of surgeries in my time, but I was worried about ruining what good vision I had. Wow. Well, people still dilated. So where are we going, bud? Back to the specialist. You can see so many people. So check out these cool sunnies. <laughs> so back to see John. 
eye, eye surgeon. Show him your girdle. <laughs> and your walking stick. So, <laughs> amongst having an opera or double eye surgery, I've um, managed to slip a disc as well. So I've got a cane. Looks quite comical because I've got a cane plus I've got the dark sunnies. <laughs> yeah, but that thing made your waist. Oh, yeah. your back. And a back girdle. Rocking it, man. This is awesome. Hey. Wait till you see him at night when he's got two eye patches on <laughs> with his walking stick and his girdle. <laughs> you should get all that when you have the different bit of. It's quite nice. So, uh, T-H-O-A, next one's A-T-O-H-X. Yeah, it's a bit blurry because of... <laughs> the people still dilated, but you're yeah. going to get lower. We might have a bit of a tap, nice and easy. Catch that for the other eye. Awesome. Pressure looks good. Yeah, that's fine. I can read that, no problem. Let's try and make it smaller. Challenging. <laughs> yes, I can read that. Good, it's getting better. And this product size. Yeah, I can read it for. Perfect. And by holding, getting there. Great. It looks a bit red, so yeah. we'll note that to John and then we'll have a look at everything for you, okay, mate? Too um, But you're on the right track, you're doing well. You made it. Right. I had a great result with my eyes. Um, my long sidedness was perfect. Hadn't lost any, hadn't, they reckon I was better than average. Haven't hadn't lost any of that, but my short vision from using computers and stuff, screens, whatever I'd imagine, um, I needed glasses all the time, and it was just becoming a real pain in the ass. If you wear glasses for reading, you'll know what I mean. Had to get rid of it. Um, I've gone back my month or six week checkup, and I've got better than 2020 vision, so, that's a great result for me. No glasses, and literally I can read any fonts they throw at me at the, the, with the vision books, you get all different size fonts. Uh, and really oddly, the closer you bring the font, like to your face, like a little child when they're reading, the better it actually gets. So I'll stick a photo of a little lens that they put in. It's uh, here. Don't know if there's any procedure I can put in there, but yeah, it's something certainly to consider, but obviously seek medical advice before making such a decision. Uh, like I said, everything, that sort of operation comes with risks. And it was pretty scary, and I had a lot of anxiety about going under the knife for it, because they um, essentially just cut the side of your eyes, break your own lens out, discard it, and put an artificial glass one in there, which does all the work. So. Um, little bit of halo effect at evening on uh, whilst driving with oncoming lights but that's supposed to, and has settled even in six weeks so and I think your brain just adjusts to it um, heaps of people when they're doing it it's fairly expensive but um, yeah, you get a little bit back from Medicare but it's essentially just a cataract surgery so I'd recommend it anyway to any of my friends and family and uh, you guys. So, all right, stick around. So also guys, just friend of the guy on Facebook, Richard Gilmore, um, mate of mine sent me a, his latest video. The quality of this video and the fishing, I think he's up Cooktown, Cairnsway. Check it out, I'll put it down below. But like I said, if you're, you you like ours, you'll love his. On the other line, fishing adventures or something like that. Anyway, I'll put the link below. First video, it's going gangbusters, so this guy's channel's gonna blow up. Uh, awesome video, and once again, it's just how much content you can get out there being a fisherman. It's hard to get out in the water, so that's why we do these sort of videos. That's why I'm letting you guys know, this case was because of my eyes. Had the multi, uh, multi-focal lenses put in, but that's why I've been down in Brisbane for like a month, plus the weather's been utter rubbish and it's enabled us to get a few things done we've needed to got a bit going on with work like everyone else but 
Thanks for tuning in. Let's get back to that crab cook. We haven't been fishing for a while because we're down at the sunny coast, but my neighbour Steve has given us crabs. We don't mind. When I win a chicken dinner, one cooked and one uncooked. So what we're going to do is make um, chili crab with that tonight. So thanks, Steve, again. A bit of a trade-off again with some fish for um, crab, which we don't mind. A bit of a break from eating fish all the time. So at the moment, we're just doing some veggies to eat with our crab. Apparently the fishing was really good this weekend. Shame we couldn't get out. Some of the um, pictures on Facebook showing the glass out. I've never made um, chili crab before, but I've just um, found a recipe online. So I'm just cutting up, like they're saying, cut up garlic, ginger, chilies. Bit of coriander, couldn't find fresh, fresh coriander, but so I just got this packet here. But we're, I'm just getting it all prepared now and hopefully it'll turn out fine. I'm pretty sure it'll still taste great. I said to use minced garlic, but I like fresh garlic. That's dried. Bit of ginger. That smells good, eh? Good. Coriander, garlic, tablespoon of tomato paste. I don't measure anything. Tomato paste, and a tablespoon of sugar. I'll put a bit less of that. So it's saying. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. This looks about right. Two hundred mils of tomato puree. So we need half a tin of this. Sweet chili sauce. So we need two tablespoons of that. Put a little bit of vinegar in this. It says white vinegar, but I don't have any, so too bad. Of coconut. We're going to add some green prawns to this just to, just because we can, I suppose. <laughs> I don't have a wok, but I'm going to just try and cook it in a big saucepan. Hopefully, that'll work. Let's chuck them in there. I reckon it would have been nice to leave the shells on. So here's two halves of crabs that we got. What size claws are they? I didn't realise that you had to actually um, smash the claws up. Nettie just told me now, but I've just found this in the garage. So. Oh, I don't really like doing this because it's just like I don't want all this shit to go, shell to go through all the meat. But anyway, this is what he says we're going to do. Jesus. If there's shell on me meat, you'll hear me, hear me screaming. Right. It worked out really well because we didn't know what we were going to have for dinner tonight. And then when Steve rang us, we thought, well, oh, this just made our day.
the shame twice this, so I'm just gonna chuck a bit more in there. Some chili flakes in just to wrap it up a bit. Oh. I think I put a bit too much chili in it. Wouldn't it be good if we could get some scallops today? That'd be really nice in here, I reckon. Get a bit sweet. We're going to put some fish in it that we had to um, trade off with Steve, and he ended up with the rest of our fish today. <laughs> that one I've got down here at Sunny Coast. Remember these? Where we got them from? No. You don't. We got the Vetinchin Brook at the um, resort that shut down, remember? We walked through the resort and we walked through the kitchen and they had all this stuff there that was just getting smashed. And we managed to salvage some of these plates, which were out of their restaurant from the Hinchin Brook Resort. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. Cool. That is a yeah, true story. And I think I got um, glass here. That's it there. From the Hinchinbrook Resort. So we're having Hinchinbrook between my crowd. So this is our version of chili mud crab guys and we've just added some prawns in some basic veg. I'm going to give this a bit of a test and see what it's like. Oh, that is so cool. You've really got to try this. It's quite easy to make. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and sorry we haven't uploaded in a long time. We've been down the sunny coast but hopefully we'll be back on the water soon and we'll see you again shortly. No, I'm just going to make some mess. I'm ready, you? Have I got the bigger portion? Cool. Thanks, dude. I don't know why we've never cooked this before. It's probably less effort than boiling them. So good. I'll have to go and get the hammer. Oh, look at that. How lucky was that? <laughs> That's what your butt's gonna look like tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks guys. Here's to looking at ya.